Hello there, this is Glenn Berry with Dr. DMV LLC, and I'm back with another video. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use Crystal Disk Info. This is open source software developed in Japan, and here's the home page for the website that hosts the software. And you'll come in here and you'll see Crystal Disk Info on the left in blue here, and then Crystal Disk Mark on the right. And if we go to the Crystal Disk Info homepage, there's a little bit more information about the different variations of Crystal Disk Info. So if we scroll down, here's the standard edition, and then they've got a couple of other editions that have some anime art embedded in them. So whichever one of those ones you prefer. And I would advise you don't click this download button. Instead, you want to make your way to the download file list. And this will let you go in and pick the exact package that you want because I think it's better to use the portable edition which comes in a zip file. If you download some of the other things you might see in the other pages, you'll get the executable that's a setup program that actually installs it on your machine permanently and you'll have to use add or remove programs to remove it. So it's a lot easier in my opinion to use the portable version. So down here is the list of different packages that are available. And we want the regular non-anime Crystal Disk Info zip. This is the executable one that has the setup program. So we'll go ahead and download this. And it should come down pretty quickly. It's a, a fairly small zip file. And it's 6.4 megabytes. So now it's done on my machine. After you downloaded the program, you'll have to find it on your machine. And by default, it should be in your downloads folder. So that's where it is on my machine. And here's a zip file. So all you need to do there is right click and pick extract all. And this has nearly 500 mostly small files in it. So it takes a few seconds to extract even on a very fast machine. But once that's done, you'll have another folder that has all the different files. And then here's the four executable programs that you have to choose from. And there's a readme.txt that will actually show you information about what all these things mean. So you've got an x86 version, an x64 version that most of us will probably use, and then two different ARM versions. So you're probably just going to be using disk info 64. So that's what we're going to pick out and, and go ahead and start it. So you double click on it right here and you'll get a UAC warning. And then it's going to actually start the program. So here's what it looks like after it starts up. And the first thing you might want to do is go into the theme menu and go to zoom and you can make this quite a bit larger. So the per for the purposes of the video, I'm going to go ahead and set it to 300%, which makes it extremely large. But that's a lot easier for people to read, especially on phones. So when it comes up, it'll actually show you a list of all the disks that you have in your system. And it comes up on disk number one. And so that's what we're on right now. And it also shows them up here on this top bar. So drive M is disk number one and drive L is disk number two and so on. So you can go through and look at this information on each one of the drives that you can, that you have installed in your system. So my M drive, for example, is an old Western digital green hard drive. It's a three terabyte drive. And here's the actual model number of it. And then you have all this very useful information about each drive. So it shows you the firmware information, the serial number of the drive, the interface. So in this case, it's SATA and then the transfer mode, whether it's SATA 600. And it shows you the current mode and the supported mode. So where this is very handy is if you had this SATA 600 plugged into an older SATA port that only supported SATA 300 or SATA 150, it would show you. So it actually will support 600, but it's only in 300, for example, and that would be bad. But in my case, it's doing just fine. And then you can see the drive letter in Windows, and you can see what features that are exposed by this drive. So it's got smart monitoring, and then native command queue is what NCQ means. And if you hover over this, it explains what these different terms mean. So that's kind of nice. There's a lot of handy tool tips in this program. It shows you the power on count. That's how many times the system's been turned on and off since this drive's been in use, and then how many hours it's been in use. And if you hover over it, if it'll just stop, it'll show you 
hours transferred to years, days, and hours. So it's been over a year and a half that this thing has been in use. And then down here at the bottom, you have a lot of information about errors and spin up time and whether the other bad things are happening to your drive. It also shows you the health status according to SMART and also the current temperature of the drive. And that's good to know because if you've got poor case ventilation, for example, your drives are going to run hotter. And that doesn't affect mechanical hard drives as much, but it's more of an issue with uh, NVMe SSDs. They tend to overheat, and if they overheat, they have thermal throttling, which really reduces their performance. So moving along, I've got an L drive, and this is a 2.5-inch SATA SSD. And it's a one terabyte Samsung 860 Evo. And again, you can see the firmware version and the serial number and the fact that it's SATA and it's in SATA 600 mode. And it's drive letter L. And here's all the features that it supports. And then again, you get information about the power on count and the power on hours. And here's the temperature. So this is running quite cool. And then 100% on the health status, the reason you get a percentage for SSDs and you didn't get it on the mechanical drive is because NAND SSDs have a finite life in terms of how many writes they can handle. And the smart monitoring protocol will let you read that. So over time, if you do more and more writes to this drive, that percentage is gonna go down and eventually get down to zero. And at some point, this NAND flash drive will become read only when you exhaust all the writes that it has available. So going on, on my C drive, this is an M.2 SSD. It's NVMe PCIe Express. And this is even more interesting because my drive life has gone down to 98% already. And I've had this for a while and used it pretty heavily. But again, you want to monitor that over time to make sure you're not getting close to zero. And what's interesting about NVMe drives is it shows you, of course, NVMe Express. And that's actually not an interface. That's a protocol. This is using the PCIe interface. But it shows you the transfer mode again. And it shows you that the current mode is PCIe 4.0 X4. So it's using four lanes of PCIe 4.0. And that's all that is supported. So that's good. But if I had accidentally put this drive into an M.2 slot that only supported PCIe 3.0, that would show up right here. So instead of 4.0, it would say 3.0. And that would cut my bandwidth in half. It also tells you what version of NVMe Express you're using. So that's the protocol version again. And then all the features that it supports. And then this is running quite a bit hotter. And that's not uncommon for M.2 drives. They tend to run hotter. And if I was to do some stress testing while this was running, you would see the temperature start to climb. And then I've got some other drives here. So, you know, I've got a one terabyte 980 Pro and then a two terabyte 980 Pro. And you can see again, things like the firmware version and the serial number and all this other good information that you get. And then finally, I've got an Intel Optane drive. It's a 280 gig uh, Optane 900 and it's only PCIe 3.0 and it's got an older version of NVMe Express in it. But you can see that it's running at its full rated speed for as far as the transfer mode is concerned. Now that we've taken a look at some of the basic functionality, let's dive a little bit deeper here. So if you go to the file menu, you have a save option that saves a text file of the current, what's on the screen, or you can save an image. So if you pick save text file, it goes to the folder where this is running from, and then it'll save a text file that has the information about it. And then you can do the same thing for an image. So if you go and save an image, it's right there, and you can change the name of it obviously by default, and just crystal disk info along with the date and time information. So this is really handy if you're taking screenshots for a video or a blog post or to put into an email, for example. Then you've got the edit function that lets you copy some different things and you can pick what you wanna copy here. And then you have the function menu, and let's let you do things like set how often it auto refreshes this data. So by default, it refreshes every 10 minutes, but you could change that to a different time. 
You can also pick the target, so you can just have it auto refresh certain drives or all of them. You can also hide the serial number if you're paranoid about that. You can change what alert features that it uses, so you could have it send an email if it had a certain threshold. So if you're worried about the temperature, for example, you could set this up to actually send an email once the temperature went above a certain uh, value. And you can also pick some of some advanced features here. I usually just leave this at the default, to be honest. And then you've got a theme menu. You've already seen Zoom. You can pick green mode. You can change the font settings. So if you go green mode, it does that. If you go back to theme, you can go back to the default or turn off green mode. And there's lots of things you can do to make it look differently. And then right here is the disk menu. This lets you pick different disks, which also works with these arrows here. And it also works by clicking on the disk in the top. And then you've got a lot of help information here. And then finally, there's a language menu. So if you don't want to use English, you know, whatever language you want to use, you can pick here. So you can pick German and see most of the information in German. And you have the option to have the smart information be in English. So that's down here. All the information from the smart monitoring will remain in English. And then you can switch it back to whatever language that you want. So I'll switch it back to English in this case. So that's basically what you can do with this. This is a very handy program that I use all the time because I find lots of things that are just wrong. And what I mean by that is you've got a PCIe 4.0 drive and you put it in a PCIe 3.0 slot. Or you've got a PCIe 3.0 drive that's X4, but the slot is only running in X2 mode. And that'll show up right here under transfer mode. And you can also see your lifetime and how hot the drive is running. So it's extremely handy free program that I highly recommend. This is Glenn Berry with Dr. DMV LLC, and I want to thank you for watching this video. If you like the video, please hit the thumbs up button. If you have any questions, please leave a comment. And finally, if you want to see more content like this, please subscribe because that really helps the channel out. Really? You have a lot to say.